going to read from Isaiah chapter 9. talk a wee bit about the liberty that we have in Christ. The liberty that the devil tries to take from the people of God through religion, rules and regulations and all sorts of things. Isaiah 9, written from verse 6. For unto us the child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom, to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The seal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. No matter how much the devil would like to do it, it can't be done. Jesus can't be unborn. Jesus can't be on crucified. It has been accomplished. And if you take those scriptures and take John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So if anybody's trying to explain that away because it's in the Old Testament make it to apply only to the children of Israel it's not a message from God the seal of the Lord will perform it we sung a lot of words today about the provision of the blood of Jesus it's because of the blood of Jesus that will reach our home in heaven. It's because of the blood of Jesus we have been saved, we have been delivered, baptized in the Holy Ghost on fire. And we have sung all those words today, and I want to just enforce them a wee bit by the scripture. If we go to the book of Galatians, in ch ch chapter 5, See, there's a lot of teachers going around today and they're making a whole lot of the Ten Commandments being doesn't know. But there's more than Ten Commandments in the New Covenant. They're not all doesn't know, only those to concern in the ritual. The type and shadow of Calvary. And they've talked that much about the types and shadows that they must the real thing. We have got the real deal today, Jesus. Jesus is alive and alive forevermore. We're not dependent on types and shadows. We got the real deal today. Praise God. And Galatians five and one said, and this is a command, this is not a suggestion. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The command from the Lord today, through his word and through his Holy Spirit, is to stand fast in the liberty that we have in Christ. Stand fast in everything that he accomplished on the cross. 
because man will come up with doctrines that will try to do away with the liberty that we have in Christ. Not so long ago, a man made the, the remark that I wasn't qualified to minister at the table of the Lord. He wouldn't come and tell me himself, so I had to just send him back a message. But he wasn't qualified either because he's not born again of the Spirit of God. He's a religious leader taking people to hell by the thousands. So we stand fast in the liberty that we have in Christ Jesus. And Paul that wrote this book said he was an apostle appointed by Jesus Christ, not by man, but by Jesus Christ. And whenever we're born again of the Spirit of God, washed in the precious blood of Jesus, baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, we are appointed and anointed. Man can appoint, but only God can anoint. Amen. And that's the liberty, one of the liberties that we stand fast. For Christ has made us free. He's not going to make us free. He has made us free. He has given us the liberty. But we make a decision every day. Are we going to walk in that liberty? Are we going to walk in that freedom? and that deliverance? Are we going to walk on the anointing of God? Or on the appointment of man? Well, I've made up my mind. I'm going to walk on the anointing of God. I'm going to declare the gospel as it should be. I'm going to declare the liberty that comes with the gospel of Christ. And I'm going to make sure that I'm not going to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Praise God, I skipped the yoke of bondage. I'm never going back. I'm pressing on on the liberty and the freedom that I have in Christ. 1 Corinthians 16, reading from verse 13, we're to watch and to be steadfast. First Corinthians 16, reading from verse 13, Watch ye stand fast in the faith. Stand fast in the faith, not a faith. I know a lot of people have got a faith, but it's not the faith. It's not a, It's only the faith that pleases God. For by faith we please the Lord. So we watch, we stand fast in the faith. Quit ye like men and be strong. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The Holy Spirit is our strength. When we are weak, He is strong. So we don't go about the business that we're called to do under the Great Commission that's given to the church and our own strength. We go by faith and we go by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and we go because it's the command of the Lord. Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every, every creature. He that believeth baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. The power the authority, the liberty, the peace, the joy, it all comes because we're walking in obedience to God. These signs follow them that believe. Miracles are the result of us believing God. Not who we are, but who He is. Not what we do, but because what He has done. And praise God, we take Him at His word. So we're watching. We're standing fast in the faith. We're 
quitting ourselves like men, we're equipping ourselves on a daily basis when we wait upon the Lord. We're in you and our strength, we're mounting up with wings as eagles. We're running, we're not weary, we're walking and not fainting. Let all your things be done with charity. We gotta minister continually in love. We gotta treat each other continually in love. Doesn't matter how great our ministry ever grows. If it's not done in love, it's not of God. We can get away from the love of God and want to be seen of man. The power comes by standing fast in the liberty where both Christ has set us free. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus that is the first fruits of Achaia, that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. They have given themselves over to the ministry of the saints. That ye submit yourselves unto such and to every one that helpeth with us that liveth. We need to give ourselves continually to the work of God. We need to give ourselves continually to minister in the love of God. And that's where we're going to see the manifestation of the power of the Word of God. The Word of God tells us that there's many ministers and they're ministering because of all their, their motives, different motives. They may see results because of the power of the Word. But if we're going to see the Church of Christ functioning, it'll be because we're ministering everything in charity, everything in love. If we go to Thessalonians 5, 1 Thessalonians 5, First Thessalonians 5 verse 1 But of the times and the seasons, brother, you have no need that I write unto you. Every one of us is aware of what's going on around us in the world today, the evil that's going on. We're on the days whenever they call evil good and good evil. We're on the days of total disobedience. Children to their parents and so on. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. We're getting a warning here about running out of time. I know we're all looking for the coming of the Lord, but we need to be looking to how many people we can get into the kingdom of God before that day comes. We need to be available. And that does my heart good when I hear about people being available and ministering to other people and leading them to the Lord. That's, that's a mighty blessing. And I'm only a pastor. What does the heart of God feel? Whenever he sees his children being available and reaching out with love and reaching out and seeing people saved, healed, delivered baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. For when they say peace, peace, when they say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. There's many places in the world today they're saying peace, we're going to sign a deal, we're going to do that. But that's the day that the devil's at work and we need to be keeping our minds fixed upon the return of the Lord. They say peace in the world, but there is no peace. But we have the Prince of Peace dwelling within us. We take the, peace, the Prince of Peace everywhere we go because he says he'll never leave us, nor he'll never perceive us. 
part of the atonement, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Everything that tries to hinder our peace, we can address it and say, get behind me, Satan, because anything that would hinder my peace was upon Jesus on the cross. That's what it means to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set us free. We're not worried about destruction coming upon them. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. Praise God, we're not in darkness. We're no longer in darkness. We were in darkness. But we met Jesus. He brought us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His great Son, His light. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. We got to stand again in the liberty wherewith Christ has set us free. We may be going under a trial or going through a trial or are on our way out of a trial. And it may look dark, but by faith and in the liberty wherewith Christ has set us free. The scripture says, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. The devil will try to make me think it's dark. So it comes down to two choices, whether I believe God or I believe the devil. You notice that the devil comes in the form of mankind many times. The scripture that I would like to hear somebody explain to me was Jesus looked up and he said, here comes Satan. What did he see? I would love to know what he did see. He says, here comes Satan, but he has nothing on me. And when we're standing in the liberty we're with Christ to set us free, whatever shape or form the devil turns up on, we can say, here comes Satan, but he has nothing on me because I'm covered over with the precious blood of Jesus. I am a child of the Most High God. I'm standing in a liberty. I'm living in a peace. I'm living in victory. Hallelujah. I don't live in control. I live in the realm of power and authority. The realm of control is the devil's realm, and you see it in Jezebel's. You see it all around. You people want to control other people. Then there's people and they can't love unless they're controlled. They need to step into the liberty wherewith Christ has set us free. I know it's a difficult thing for some people to get their mind around power and authority versus control. And when you get the insight of the scripture unto it, it's a difference of day and night. We're not in darkness where that that day should overtake us a thief. We're in communion with the Lord. That relationship with the Lord growing and developing every day. And His coming's not going to overtake us as a thief. But we're going to be in that communion with the Lord. We're going to be ready. We're watching. We're waiting. Ye are all the children of light. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. And then verse 5 says, Ye are all the children of light, the children of the day. We're not of the night nor of darkness. Our day and darkness ended whenever we repented of our sins and called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever we begin to stand steadfast, and the liberty wherewith Christ set us free. But let us who are of the day be sober, not distracted, not taken up with other things, not being light-headed, light-minded, not paying any attention to what's happening around us.
But let us be sober. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation totally protected Some people like to make a message out of putting on the breastplate and all the armor and then declaring their backs open for the attack of the enemy. That is not scripture. To be steadfast and the liberty with Christ to set us free were totally covered over with the precious blood of Jesus totally covered over in other scriptures is that the glory of the Lord is our rear reward. In other words, our guard, our backward guard, we're covered totally. You see, it's hellish doctrines like these that put fear in people where fear ought not to be. Because perfect love casts out all fear. We can go into tricky situations and know we're covered over with the precious blood of Jesus. Remember walking into the headquarters of a gang in Balamina. And the head said to me, Who are you, hey? Who gave you permission to come on here, hey? I said, the Lord God Almighty, give me permission. Two of that gang got saved. I didn't have to get me back against the wall because I wasn't covered. I'm covered over with the precious blood of Jesus. No need for fear. Jesus covered it all. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're putting on the breastplate of faith and love for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath. What does that do with the doctrine that the church is going to go through the great tribulation? We have not been appointed to wrath. We have not been appointed to to go through the great tribulation. We have not been appointed to be tortured under the rule of the Antichrist. The Antichrist cannot function until the church is taken out of the way. In other words, until the church is raptured. And when we look around the world today and see what's going on around us, all the evil that's going on, what's it going to be like whenever the scripture says that he, that Lazarus, has taken out of the way? The Holy Spirit working through his church is taken out of the way. It's going to be hell upon earth. And we haven't been appointed to wrath. What are we appointed to? To obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. The destruction didn't come on Sodom and Gomorrah. To Lot and his family moved out. Destruction didn't come on the nation of Egypt. To the children of Israel had moved out. And the very trap that the devil set for the children of Israel is the very trap that brought judgment on Egypt. And the devil saw that great pathway through the Red Sea. And he encouraged Egypt to follow the children of Israel unto what was an escape for the children of God was a death trap for Egyptians. So we don't need to worry about the death traps that the devils are setting for us. We just press on. 
we have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Years ago, we had people on this island. They changed that song round to We Have Decided to Follow and not name the man. But they're reaping now what they sowed then. They're reaping the destruction. God's people are not to be messed with. He died for us that whether we wake or sleep we should live together with him. Jesus died for us and he's our Lord, he's our Savior whether we have died or whether we're still living. He died for us that whether we wake or sleep we should still live with him. It doesn't matter what side of eternity we're on today. We're still loving with Jesus. We're still loving together. He can't, the devil can't separate us. Wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. You see, this is very important that we have peace amongst the children of God. We need unity. We need peace. And to uh, that's right. now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. We have got a responsibility. They'll not like it. But we have a responsibility to warn people that we see unruly. It's not a pleasant situation to be in, but it's a blessed situation. Because there's many today in their own ruling. They've been taught the wrong thing. And because they've been getting the wrong teaching, they've got the wrong revelation, not from God. Why has God given the fivefold ministry to the church of Ephesians 4 left? Give the fivefold ministry there so that the people of God would come to maturity. Now you go and find today those that will not accept the fivefold ministry. Those that will not go to a church if there's a pastor on it. And you will find on really people you will find people that never come to maturity. And they'll be pushing doctrines that are not according to the Word of God. So we're to warn those that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient towards all men. See that no re none render evil for evil. We don't return evil for evil. We bless. We don't curse. Because sweet water and bitter water can't come out of the same well. If Jesus is manifesting through us, we can't curse we got to bless continually. we got to be patient. We don't render evil for evil unto any man. But ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Not just the odd time. All hell can go be can loose around us, but we can rejoice in the midst of it. Because our eyes are not fixed on that. Our eyes are fixed on the outcome. Sometimes we see people that we pray for that would seemingly be going the wrong road. But we got to rejoice continually because we see the, out the outcome. God 
God's plan of household salvation. God's plan of deliverance. We're rejoicing evermore, praying without ceasing. That doesn't mean you can't go to work because you got to stay at home and pray. Our whole life is a lifestyle of praying. Even when we're at work, go to work, come home, work, whatever. It's a lifestyle of communication with God. There's many different types of prayer. But this prayer without ceasing is a communication open all the time. In everything give thanks. For well, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We don't give thanks for what's happening. We're giving thanks for what has happened and what's going to happen. Because we're between our destiny and the cross. We're not waiting on Jesus to go to the cross. We're not giving thanks for what we're facing, but we're giving thanks because we've got the power and authority and the ability in God to face what we're facing. And we're giving God thanks for we know what the outcome's going to be. Because we're more than conquerors. We overcome every day by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. A whole lot of this can go down to renewing our mind. And everything give thanks. This is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you. We want to walk in the will of God. We don't want to pick and choose the bits of the will of God we want to walk in. We want to walk in the will of God. He knows best. We make a real mess of things if we organized it. All you ever do is look at Stormont and see the mess up there. One wants to organize us, somebody wants to organize something else. But we have got a God. But He knows the end from the beginning. He knows all about it. Quench not the Spirit. If we disobey the Spirit of God, and the Holy Spirit knows best, and He's leading us, and we're quenching that Spirit. That's not a good place to be. We're letting the devil rob and steal. The occupation of the devil in John 10 and 10 is to steal, kill, and destroy. But the occupation of Jesus Christ is to give life and to give it to us more abundantly. So we don't want to quench the Holy Spirit. We want to be led of the Spirit of God. Despise not prophecy. Hmm. Do I need to say any more about that? They do more and despise. They say it doesn't exist. Prove all things. We'll prove all things in the laying of the word of God. If they line up with God, we're going to have them. If we're not lighting up the Word of God, we don't want them. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace, the very God of peace is the one that we serve. Sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. These are the thoughts we want to keep renewing our mind with when the attacks of Satan comes. Then I asked the brethren to pray for him. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that the apostle be read unto all the holy brethren. 
The will of God of this epistle was read throughout the whole world. The devil may make us think we're just a small bump on a log somewhere. But it was the plan of God that this epistle be read. It's the plan of God that this epistle be taken heed to. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Praise God. There's so much more we can say about this and probably will. But I want to address anybody that may be watching by the internet or any other way. If you're not saved, you're outside of the family and fold of God. It doesn't matter what religious ritual you have went through. It doesn't matter what's above the door of the place where you meet. What matters is, is Jesus dwelling with them. Have you repented and called upon the name of Jesus? Because there's no salvation in any other. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And if you analyze that statement, it says that Jesus is the only way. He's the only life. And you can't come to the Father without him. And how do you come? How does anybody come to Jesus? the common repentance. Never Peter was preaching in Acts 2. The people realized how far they went from the plan of God and they said, what can we do? And Jesus said, repent. Call upon the name of Jesus. Be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. This promise is unto you and to your children's children. So if you want to come to Jesus today, just repeat this prayer in sincerity. Praying from your heart, Lord Jesus Christ, I repent of all my sin. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I yield to you. I believe in my heart. And I confess with my tongue that you are the Son of the living God. If you have sincerely prayed that prayer, then you are a child of God. You have come unto the kingdom of God, and you need to begin to read the word of God. You need to find a Bible teaching, Bible believing church, where you'll be taught the word of God, and you'll grow and develop in this relationship. You'll grow and develop, and you'll be fit to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you. If you have prayed that prayer today, I want to pray for you. Father God, I pray that you have heard these prayers today. I ask you to draw near to them, Lord, and touch them. Lord, that you will reveal the manifest presence of yourself. Lord, that they'll know that they've been touched by a greater power. Father God, if they have a need in their body or a need in their circumstances, I pray, Father God, that you will touch them. And, oh, Lord, you've already healed them. You bought and paid for it at Calvary. And I pray the manifestation of the healing power flowing through their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that every need been met, Lord, for you supply all our needs according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Father God, bless them. Bless their family. Keep them, protect them, Lord. The Lord will be careful to give you all the praise and give you all the glory. If you have prayed that prayer and you've been touched by the hand of God, let us know that we can rejoice with you. We're not after your money. We're after your testimony of what God is doing. So if you give Audrey a bell, let us know what God's doing. Father God, I praise you for every home that's represented in this house today. I pray household salvation. I pray unity in Jesus' name. I pray every need met, every problem solved in Jesus' name. Father God, we will be careful to give you all the praise. 
give you all the glory. And God's people said amen and shouted. Hallelujah. Amen. May the Lord bless you.